गुटी फोर्ट और गुत्ती कोटा अ फोर्ट ऑफ एंटीक्विटी ट्रेसिंग इट्स ऑरिजिन टू द एरा ऑफ चालुक्यास ऑफ बादामी लेटर इट वॉज अ स्ट्रेटेजिकली इंपॉर्टेंट फोर्ट फॉर द विजयनगर आई एम्पायर गुट्टी वॉज द हेडक्वार्टर्स ऑफ बुक्कर आया वन ऑफ द फाउंडर्स ऑफ द विजयनगर एम्पायर अ स्टोन इंस्क्रिप्शन मेड ड्यूरिंग बुक्का पीरियड कॉल्स गुट्टी एज द नेम ऑफ द व्हील ऑफ सॉवरनिटी ओवर द होल अर्थ कर्नल विल्क्स अ ब्रिटिश हिस्टोरियन notes in his writing that gutti with its graded fortifications and 14 gateways was a citadel that can be won over only by famine or treachery so what made this fort invincible to know more stay tuned till the end of this video if you like watching videos about historical places do subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button at the bottom right corner of this video Gooti is the headquarters of the Gooti Taluk in the Anantapur district of Andhra Pradesh. It is located approximately 50 kilometers from Anantapur town, around 260 kilometers from Bangalore, and 310 kilometers from Hyderabad. During ancient times, this place used to be known as Gautamapura, as a rishi named Gautama resided here. Over time, this name was corrupted to Gooti. The British anglicized the name to Gooti. The Gooti Fort is built on a massive precipitous rock that rises above to about 2000 feet from the ground level. The strong rampart wall of the fort is built with irregular blocks of granite and lime mortar. It encloses two rocky hills in the foreground and two hills behind, creating a roughly square area. The walls of the fort span a perimeter of approximately 6 kilometers. Within this area between the hills, the old town of Gooti is situated. The westernmost hill on which the citadel or the main fort complex is built commands over the lower fortifications and the town below. Overall, the fort had seven rampart walls, one built within the other, encircling different peaks of the hill, giving the fort the shape of a spiral or conch. These ramparts, built one behind the other, were connected by gateways flanked by bastions and watchtowers. The road or pathway to the top is winding. and passed through 14 gateways the enemy had to cross these 14 gateways to reach the top level where the palace complex was located the strong rampart is further enforced by many bastions around the fort close to 100 in number soldiers stationed on these bastions could keep a watch on the region around the fort to look out for any approaching enemy the rampart walls had wide battlements or walking areas for soldiers to walk they had parapet walls in front that had pierce holes for observation so who built this fort let us briefly look at the history of the gooti fort the earliest inscriptional records found in the gooti fort indicate the chalukyas of badami ruled this area around the 7th and 8th century ad on the fourth gateway of gooti fort there is an inscription that says an image of battaraki which possibly meant durga was installed here by the chalukya king vallabhai varaja a kannada inscription found in halageri in the haveri district of karnataka made during the rule of vijayaditya mentions that an officer named garoja was in charge of the territory commanded by the forts of koppala and gutti these inscriptions indicate that gutti was one of the important regions for the western chalukyas After this Gutti passed into the hands of the Rashtrakutas although inscriptions of the Rashtrakuta period are not found in Gutti however an inscription found in Hulgur in Karnataka dated to 971 AD calls King Narasimha II as Gutti a Ganga meaning the Ganga ruler of Gutti Narasimha II was a western Ganga king ruling under the Rashtrakutas then during the period from the last quarter of the 10th century to the first half of the 12th century AD The Kalyani Chalukyas controlled this region as evidenced by many inscriptions found in the Gutti region belonging to various Kalyani Chalukya rulers such as Someshwara II, Vikramaditya VI, Someshwara III, Jagadekamella II and Tailapa III. The inscription found in Gutti from the period of Someshwara II records that the Chola king Veera Rajendra attacked Gutti but had to turn back due to the strong resistance from the Chalukyan army. 
This inscription records the first major attack on Gutti Fort by a powerful kingdom and is a testimony to the strength of the fort. After the western Chalukyas were overthrown, the next major power that emerged in Karnataka region were the Hoysalas. An inscription in the Harihara temple at Davangere cites the names of many forts won by Veera Ballala too and that list includes Gutti. So the Hoysalas must have had the fort for some time. When the western Chalukyas of Kalyana declined, some of the regions were controlled by their feudatories, the Kakatiyas of Warangal and the Yadavas of Devgiri. The Gutti fort came to the hands of the Yadavas of Devgiri. An inscription at Niluru in Gutti Talok, belonging to the time of the Yadava king Singhana and dated to 1215 AD, mentions that Gutti was administered by their vassal, Telugu ruler Dandi Deva Chola Maharaja. During the 14th century, many Hindu kingdoms of the Deccan fell one after the other to Muslim invaders from north, starting from the Yadavas of Devgiri to the Hoysalas of Dwara Samudra. In this transition period, there is not much record of what happened to Gutti Fort. Around 1336 AD, the Vijayanagara kingdom emerged, founded by two brothers Harihara and Bukkaraya. Gutti was one of the bases from which this empire emerged as recorded in many inscriptions. There are a few stone inscriptions that record that Harihara I was ruling a region known as Sindhavadi Thousand with his capital at Adavani, present day Adoni, and his Nelevidu or residence was at Gutti. During this time, Gutti was the western frontier of the Vijayanagara kingdom and Harihara had appointed his brother Bukka as the governor of Gutti. There is an inscription of Bukka I engraved on a rock in the Gutti fort that calls Gutti as the nave of the wheel of sovereignty. Bukka stayed in Gutti until 1347 AD when he captured Penugunda from the Hoysalas and shifted his headquarters there. During the time of Krishna Devaraya, Gutti was raised to the status of Rajya or province and was called as Gutti Rajya. An inscription at Korapadu dated 1513 AD mentions that Gutti Rajya was ruled by Saluva Govinda Raja, the elder brother of Timarasu, the Prime Minister of Krishna Devaraya. During the rule of Achyuta, there was a rebellion by some local chiefs at Gutti. Achyuta personally marched to Gutti and controlled the rebellion there and then proceeded to Tirupati. After Achyuta died in 1542, there was a power struggle between two groups. One group wanted Achyuta's infant son Venkata to become the king and this was led by Salakaraju Chinna Tirumala, the brother-in-law of Achyuta. Another group wanted Achyuta's nephew Sadashiva to be made the king and this faction was led by Aliya Ramaraya. Chinna Tirumala initially succeeded in making Venkata the king and he became the regent who was ruling for a short period. Aliya Ramaraya fought back and over many battles defeated Chinna Tirumala. He secured the release of Sadashiva from imprisonment at Gutti and made him the emperor. Although Sadashiva was the king, he was just a puppet in the hands of Aliya Ramaraya who acted as the de facto ruler. In 1565 AD, Aliya Ramaraya was defeated and killed by the Muslim forces in the battle of Talikota and Hampi was destroyed. After the capital Hampi was sacked, the Vijayanagara rulers shifted to Andhra region and this new Aravidu dynasty of Vijayanagar ruled from Penukonda. The Gupti region continued to be loyal to the Aravidu dynasty. However, Kutti came under repeated attacks from the neighboring Muslim powers, the Adil Shahis of Bijapur and the Kutub Shahis of Golconda. Amir ul Mulk, the general of Kuli Kutub Shah, captured Kutti during the period of Venkata II. But this lasted for a short period only as they were chased away by the Vijayanagara rulers. Again when Sriranga III was rolling, he faced constant attacks from the Kutub Shahis of Golconda. Finally, Mir Jumla, a governor of the Kutub Shahis, captured the Gutti fort from Sri Ranga and it passed on to the Kutub Shahis of Golconda. They had it for around 40 years until Mir Jumla defected to the side of the Mughals and the Kutub Shahis of Golconda were defeated by the Mughals. In 1687 AD, the Kutub Shahis of Golconda were defeated by the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb. During this time, Gutti came under the Mughals. It was administered by General Giyasuddin Khan, the governor of Aurangzeb at Adoni. In 1746 AD, the Gutti fort came to the hands of the Maratha chief Morari Rao Gorpade. 
by 1754 AD he had made it his residence he built a new palace complex on the top many of the ornamentation work that you see on the gateways were done during this period murari rao ruled from gutti for about 20 years in 1775 AD Hyder Ali laid a siege and captured the lower part of the Gutti fort. Morari Rao withstood the siege for months, but then shortage of water in the upper part of the fort made him surrender. He was taken as a prisoner and Hyder Ali became the new master of the Gutti fort. After him, his son Tipu had possession of the fort until 1799 AD when he was killed in the Fourth Anglo-Mysore War. According to the pre-war treaty, Gutti was to be the share of Nizam of Hyderabad who fought the war on the British side against Tipu Sultan. After the defeat of Tipu in the war of 1799, a British officer, Colonel Browser, was sent to take control of the Gutti fort. The killer of the Gutti fort was Zeruwar Khan, who even after hearing the news of Tipu's death refused to surrender the fort. Colonel Browser had to start bombarding the fort during which other soldiers under Zeruwar Khan rebelled against him. and handed him over to the british the fort was then taken over and given to the nizam one year later in 1800 ad the nizams handed over many districts to the british and gutti was part of those ceded districts since 1800 the british owned the gutti fort it came under the commanding officer of bellari the british general at bellari recommended that gutti fort be made an arsenal or military depot However, the British decided only to have two companies of Indian infantry force from Bellary sent here under the leadership of two British officers. These troops used to live in the barracks and later in the quarters given to them in the Gutti town. The Gutti fort was used as a jail for Palegars of this region who rebelled against the British. By 1860, the control of this region was given to the normal police force and the soldiers were withdrawn from the fort. This concludes part 1 of the Gutti Fort video. In part 2, we will cover the information related to trekking of the Gutti Fort. Do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified when the second video is out.